If you are thinking of starting a nonprofit or working for a nonprofit, what are some of the skills or core aspects of nonprofit management that you really need to become good at? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Hey, I'm Amber Melanie Smith. I'm a nonprofit founder and executive director, and I've been making these videos here on YouTube to share everything I've learned about starting a nonprofit, my experience with all of the things that are involved in that. Um, if you are interested in starting a nonprofit or fundraising or creating a social impact through some other type of way, definitely check out the other videos on my channel. Don't forget to give this video a like if it is useful to you, subscribe to the rest of my channel, and yeah. And also if you're interested in some nonprofit trainings to help you get started, check out my website, foundertofulltime.com. Okay, so to set the stage for what I wanna talk about today, I want to say, um, as if you don't already know, that nonprofit leaders and founders have to wear a lot of different hats. They have to be skilled in a lot of different areas. And this is usually because an organization with few resources or possibly no staff when you're first starting up. You've got to be able to fill all of the roles your organization needs until you get those resources and or staff. And a second disclaimer I want to share is that it is pretty much impossible for any one person to become an expert at everything and let alone all of the nine things that I'm going to share with you on this this list of core competencies you need for nonprofit management. So the goal here is to just learn enough to be dangerous. Learn the basics of each of these things. If you are a nonprofit leader or founder um, or savvy board member, learn the basics and then surround yourself with really smart people who might be skilled in each of these areas so that you can rely on their expertise and work together as a super awesome team getting everything done. Let's get into these nine things I'm going to talk about, these nine skills or core aspects of nonprofit management you need to know as a nonprofit leader or founder. For each of these, I'm going to describe what it is, why it's important, and then offer just a quick tip to help you think about it practically and figure out how you might get started with this aspect of nonprofit management. The first skill that you've got to have is in strategic planning. Now, strategic planning is when you create a usually a written plan that lays out the goals and activities your organization will undertake throughout the next year or couple of years in order to work towards its longer term vision and mission. Why is it important to know how to do strategic planning? Well, social change and community change can take a very long time. And so when you have a what feels like a large insurmountable goal, like for example, ending child food insecurity in your city, you've got to be able to break it down into smaller manageable steps each year or every couple of years so that you know that your team is making incremental progress on the issue. And most issues are also very complicated. There might be seven things that you have to do in order to create a city in which no child goes hungry. So in one year, you might focus on one of those seven things. Another year, you might focus on two other um, items on that list. It really depends on you know the progress you're making, the barriers that you're facing, and some of the opportunities around you in your environment. So being able to spot those opportunities, spot those challenges, and then work out a plan for what you're gonna do that year as an organization in order to work towards that grand vision that you have is a really important skill. If you haven't done strategic planning before, it can feel pretty daunting. You might not know where to begin. So my quick tip for you is to begin by collecting data and feedback from your community. Get a sense of what challenges they are seeing out in their community. You can't be everywhere at once. You also can't speak for every person that you um, support and benefit. So you wanna hear directly from them. What are their needs? What are the challenges they're seeing? And how can those things shape your plans, your plan and your design desired activities for that year. The second skill you've got to have is board governance. Now board governance is the act of developing processes and systems and policies that help your board effectively govern the organization. For example, what is your organization's process for recruiting board members, training board members, um, developing new policies for the organization, 
approving your annual budget, etc. This is really important because for nonprofits, especially in the United States, the board of directors is the governing body. This is the group of people who are voting on critical decisions for your organization, like what policies to adopt, what your annual budget should include. And so you wanna make sure that these folks have a structure in place that allows them to govern effectively, become and stay well informed on what's going on in your organization and the organization's needs, and be able to make really informed decisions decisions because if they can't make those informed decisions they're going to make bad decisions and then that will influence the trajectory of your organization and not for the better so here's my quick tip on this one if you can find and elect a very strong board chair to kind of lead the board uh, someone who ideally has nonprofit board experience already and kind of knows how things are supposed to go and can speak to what it is, what it should look like to um, serve on the board of a directors for a nonprofit organization. The other benefit of having a strong board chair is if that person is not you, um, that frees you up to focus on other things, knowing that that person will have your back and that you'll be able to get the information you need to the board in a timely manner. I wanna mention I also have another video that delves a little bit deeper into board of directors management, so be sure to check that out. It's nine strategies for managing your board of directors. Go figure. The third skill you've got to have some competency in as a nonprofit leader is human resources and people management. Human resources covers all these aspects of recruiting and hiring and training and onboarding and managing the nonprofit staff who are running your organization day to day. This is really important because once your organization grows to the point that it can hire and sustain paid staff, assuming that is your goal, it's really important to know how to um, effectively retain them, treat them well, uh, manage their time effectively, make sure that they have proper training so that they know how to do their jobs and run your nonprofits programs effectively for the benefit of the community. Making sure that you are managing people well so that they stick around is good because employee turnover can cost the organization a bit of money. And that leads me to my quick tip for this one. If you can, really do your research on competitive salaries and make sure that your staff is fairly and competitively compensated for their role and that you are investing in good training and do these things as early as you can or upfront for your organization when you're first ready to hire people. I mentioned that employee turnover is expensive, so doing these things and keeping your staff happy and around and performing their jobs well can save your organization thousands and thousands of dollars every year. The fourth skill you want to have is recruiting, managing, and retaining volunteers. Volunteers generously give their time and talents to nonprofits um, throughout the year, so dealing with volunteers, the act of recruiting them, managing them properly, these are all things that you're most likely going to need to do and know how to do as a nonprofit manager. I talked about you know, retaining paid staff, retaining volunteers is even harder because of course they're not receiving compensation, they're just doing it because of the, the interest in your, in your cause or their passion for what you do. So there's a sort of different way you would approach volunteers. And it's important because not managing volunteers properly can lead them to quitting um, or having a bad experience, which you don't want. According to the Stanford Social Innovation Review, um, poor non, I'm sorry, poor volunteer management uh, has led to about a third of people who volunteered in one year to not return again to volunteer the next year because their experience was just not good. So imagine all of that lost talent and, and lost um, time and skill that could have been lent to the nonprofit world had they just been managed more effectively. And another thing is many volunteers often become financial donors to your nonprofit too, because they've become invested in your cause, they see how it works behind the scenes, and they wanna support it even more. So here's my quick tip to get started with volunteer management, and that is start by assessing the needs and the goals of your organization for that year, identifying what volunteer roles could possibly help support 
accomplishing those goals for your organization that year, and then create a clear, detailed volunteer job description that you can use to promote your need for volunteers. I also have another video that talks a little bit more about how to encourage volunteers to sign up, so be sure to check that out too. The fifth skill you've got to have as a nonprofit leader is all about collaborations and partnerships. Because we live in an interconnected society and you can't completely solve any community or social problem completely on your own, most nonprofits are going to have to have some kind of collaboration or partnership with another entity, whether it's a another nonprofit, a business or a government entity at some point in their nonprofit life cycle. And for some missions and some organizations, partnerships might be so important that they're ongoing and permanent. Good partnerships and collaborations can raise awareness about your mission. They can introduce your organization to new potential volunteers or donors, and they can increase your credibility and your trust with the public. So knowing how to initiate and navigate these collaborations and partnerships is a critical skill. So here is my quick tip for getting started with collaborations and partnerships. You want to think about what each partner needs to bring to the table to be effective in achieving the goal of the partnership and also identifying what that goal of the partnership is. And you want to work with your partner or collaborator to clearly write out, and I mean literally write it, put it in writing, write out the expectations of each partner and the anticipated deliverables, what each partner is responsible for completing or doing as part of the partnership. This will save you so much confusion and provide so much clarity and ensure that any um, challenges or conflict that might arise from such confusion is mitigated. The sixth skill you definitely have to have is fundraising and donor stewardship. Fundraising, of course, is the act of solicitating, oh my gosh, soliciting <laughs> Uh, contributions from people vol voluntarily, um, asking people for money, etc. And donor stewardship is the act of maintaining a relationship with a donor after they've made a donation to your organization, so retaining the donor. Now, it's pretty common sense why this is important, but um, the thing is a lot of people are afraid to ask for money. Unfortunately, running a nonprofit requires usually a lot of resources, so this is a skill that you've got to be able to learn and build your confidence in to make it happen. And while asking for money itself involves some level of skill, fundraising actually includes a lot more than just that. It involves building a base of possible donors. It involves cultivating relationships with those potential donors. Then it involves making the ask. Then it involves this other concept, donor stewardship that I mentioned. Once you have someone who is generously donating to your cause, how do you keep them around? How do you inspire them to give you more donations in the future? All of these things are part of the complicated world of fundraising um, that is really important for for every nonprofit leader to be able to do with skill. And that actually leads me to my quick tip for this one. Recognize that fundraising is not just asking for money. So if that is the part that's making you nervous, don't get discouraged. Remember, it's a, a bigger um, web, a, a bigger puzzle involving many pieces that you can work on getting good at piece by piece. So first, just get good at talking about your mission, getting people excited about it, inviting them to do other things like come to an event or volunteer. It's all about building up that confidence and skill until you have a relationship relationship where you know that there's mutual trust and that someone would be willing to make a donation to your cause. And fundraising involves lots of different ways of generating revenue that isn't just requesting donations from individuals. There are lots of other ways to bring in revenue as a fundraiser. So for that, I encourage you to check out my other video that covers all of the different ways that successful nonprofits can fundraise. The seventh skill you've got to be good at is legal and financial management. So in this context, the legal and financial management stuff includes things like knowing what laws nonprofits need to follow to stay compliant, um, what things nonprofits need to file year to year, again, to stay compliant, and things like doing proper bookkeeping and managing the money in your bank account. 
Obviously, this one's pretty important because if you fail to do these things, your nonprofit could suffer penalties or fines or even get shut down because it was not doing things within the law or um, not being good stewards of the money that you have in your bank account. And poor financial management could lead to losing money, bankruptcy, getting audited, um, losing supporters. You really just would find it easier to stay on top of all of those things. And so knowing how to do them, what the rules are, um, identifying people who can help you with that is a really important skill. And that actually brings me to my quick tip and something I've mentioned in the other skills too, because it is important. Um, keeping in mind, you can't be a complete expert at everything. Take the steps you need to educate yourself on the basics of this one, um, but unless you're really, really good at it already, don't be afraid to ask for help. Find someone who can support you or even um, find the financial resources you need to outsource this aspect of your organization to make sure it gets done properly. The eighth skill is utilizing technology and maintaining a strong online presence for your nonprofit. This is important because in this day and age, nonprofits have to have a website. They've got to be engaged in social media and have an online presence. They've got to be discoverable by people looking for them, looking for information about the, the cause that you are working on. So making sure that you have that online presence and on the other side, using effective tools of technology to make sure your organization can run as effectively and efficiently as possible will save your organization money and allow you to serve more people. The consequences of not having a strong online presence is not being able to be found by people who might want to support you, or if it's a poorly designed website or um, ineffectively used social media, you might be turning supporters away by accident. And in terms of what software and technology to use, making poor choices of those things, what technology to use, can frustrate your team, slow down your programs and operations. So you really wanna have a sense of what tools are gonna to be the best for what you need to accomplish uniquely. My quick tip is that if technology is not your strong suit or building a website or maintaining social media is not your um, special area, then these are tasks that are particularly great for getting volunteer support on. Skilled volunteers love to help with these types of tasks, especially in today's world where a lot of volunteering is happening virtually or using your computer from your, your home. Um, these are great tasks you can try to get someone to help you with. And the ninth and final skill I wanna talk about is marketing and public relations. Now, marketing and public relations includes a lot of things, but it especially refers to understanding your organization's target audience, raising awareness about your organization's existence, and helping articulate your organization's mission and needs. It's important because you might have the greatest nonprofit in the whole world, but it doesn't really matter if nobody knows about it. Marketing and the um, the messaging and the storytelling and the, the media through which you talk about your cause, all of these things draw in potential supporters who might choose to donate or volunteer or support your cause in some other way. So knowing how to do it, at least on a basic level, is another critical skill. So my quick tip for this one is if you're starting from scratch, start by thinking about what are the key messages you really need the public to know about your organization what are those two or three things that you wish people just knew about your cause identify what those things are and make sure your team knows how to explain those things and use that same messaging too so that everyone across the board can be consistent in how they talk about your cause to the public and of course, I do have another helpful video on this that I did all about defining your nonprofit's unique brand. So be sure to check that one out too if you're interested in diving a little deeper on this topic. Whew, okay, so as you can see, there's a lot that goes into nonprofit management. What do you think? What areas are you the strongest in? What areas do you think you need some help in or want some um, additional um, learning in? let me know, share in the comments. And also let me know if, if you think I missed something big. I'd love to hear that, um, what you have on your mind. So 
definitely comment and if you are looking for some additional resources, like I said before, check out my website foundertofulltime.com. I also have a newsletter for nonprofit leaders and change makers with additional resources and sometimes funding opportunities. So the link to subscribe to that is in the description and sometimes in my YouTube comments as well. I'll leave it there as well. Finally, I have a group on Facebook, Change the World or Bust. We've got folks in there from everywhere talking about their journeys with their social impact projects or starting a nonprofit. So I encourage you to come find us there and join the party. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so, so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you next time.